In this lesson, we will take a look at the derivative and the tangent line problem. The limit used to define the slope of the tangent line to a graph at a given point is also used to define the derivative of the function. The process of finding the derivative of a function is called differentiation. There are several different notations that can be used to denote the derivative of y equals f of x. f prime of x dy over dx represents the derivative of y with respect to x, y prime and dx of y, the derivative of y with respect to x. The definition of the derivative of a function is given by the following limit. f prime of x equals the limit as delta x approaches zero of the difference quotient f of x plus delta x minus f of x all over delta x, provided that this limit exists. Let's take a look at an example. Find the derivative of f of x equals x squared minus 3x. We will need to apply the limit definition. So in our numerator, we have f of x plus delta x, which is found by replacing each x with the quantity x plus delta x. x plus delta x quantity squared minus 3 times x plus delta x. Then we are subtracting f of x. So here we're subtracting x squared minus 3x. And this has all been divided by delta x. So we're looking at the limit of this expression as delta x approaches 0. Expanding in the numerator, we would use FOIL to square this binomial. We arrive at x squared plus 2x delta x plus delta x squared. We've used the distributive property on this portion to arrive at negative 3x minus 3 delta x. And then this negative has also been distributed to arrive at minus x squared plus 3x all over delta x. From here, we have a number of terms in the numerator which cancel out leaving us with, if we factor out delta x, the limit as delta x approaches 0 of delta x times 2x plus delta x minus 3. So we can now see that the delta x in the numerator and in the denominator will cancel out. And we can now replace delta x with 0 to determine the value of the limit. And we find that our derivative of this function is 2x minus 3. So the derivative itself is a function. For the next example, we are looking at finding the equation for the line tangent to the graph of f of x equals square root of x at the point 1, 1. Again, we want to apply the limit definition of derivative. This will provide us with the formula for the slope of the tangent line. The derivative is the slope of the tangent line. So evaluating the limit, f of x plus delta x is the square root of x plus delta x minus f of x all over delta x. To simplify this limit, we need to rationalize the numerator. And to do that, we will multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate of the numerator. And that's simply found by taking the numerator and changing the sign to a positive. Applying that multiplication leaves us with the limit as delta x approaches 0 of x plus delta x minus x, all divided by delta x times the quantity of the square root of x plus delta x plus the square root of x. So from here, we have some algebraic simplifications to do. 
x and minus x cancel out in the numerator, leaving us with just delta x. So we can now cancel out the delta x from the numerator and the denominator, at which point we can now replace delta x with 0. In the denominator, that leaves us with the square root of x plus 0 plus the square root of x, which simplifies in the denominator to 2 square root of x. So our derivative is 1 over 2 square root of x. So this derivative, remember we're trying to find in this example an equation for the line tangent to the graph. This derivative will provide us with the formula for the slope of the line. So our derivative will provide us with the slope of the tangent line. And our derivative here is f prime of x equals 1 over 2 square root of x. So to find the, the slope of this tangent line, we want to plug 1 in for x to find that our slope is 1 half. So now we know the slope of the tangent line is 1 half. The equation of the tangent line can be found using either the point-slope formula or the slope-intercept formula. Here we have used point-slope form, replacing x and y with the point, 1, 1, and m with the slope of 1 half. And we find that the equation of this tangent line is y equals 1 half x plus 1 half. And this is what the graph looks like. If we take a look at the original function, which is square root of x, and our line, we can see that it does appear to be tangent to the curve at the point 1, 1. Now let's take a look at basic differentiation rules and rates of change. After finding all of those derivatives using the limit definition, the rules that follow should provide you with some relief. Yes, there is an easier way to find derivatives. The constant rule says that the derivative of a constant function is 0. That is, if c is a real number, then the derivative of c equals 0. Here are some examples of the constant rule. If the function is y equals 7, the derivative is 0. For f of x equals 0, f prime of x equals 0. s of t equals negative 3, s prime of t equals 0. Secondly, we have the power rule. And this rule says that if n is a rational number, then the function f of x equals x to the n is differentiable, and f prime of x equals n times x to the n minus 1. So in simple terms, we're bringing down the exponent in front of the variable, and then subtracting 1 from the exponent. For f to be differentiable at x equals 0, n must be a number such that x to the n minus 1 is defined on an interval containing c. Here are some examples of the power rule. For the function f of x equals x cubed, f prime of x equals 3x squared. For g of x equals cube root of x, we can write this as x to the one-third. So using the power rule, g prime of x equals one-third times x to the negative two-thirds. And again, this is found by bringing the exponent of one-third down in front of the x as a coefficient, and then subtracting one from one-third to give us negative two-thirds as our new exponent. This can be simplified as one over three x to the two-thirds. Lastly, y equals 1 over x squared. This can be rewritten as x to the negative 2. Therefore, y prime, using the power rule, is negative 2x to the negative 3, 
which can be rewritten as negative 2 over x cubed. Next, we have the sum and difference rules. The derivative of the sum or difference of two differentiable functions is differentiable and is the sum or difference of their derivatives. An example of this rule. Here we've got several different terms being subtracted and added. We simply apply the power rule to each term individually along with the constant rule on this last term. The derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. The derivative of negative 4x is negative 4. The derivative of the 5 is 0. So we've simply taken the derivative of each of the terms that are being added and subtracted. Next, we'll take a look at the derivatives of the sine and cosine functions. The derivative of sine x is equal to cosine x, and the derivative of cosine x is equal to negative sine x. For example, for the function y equals 2 sine x, our derivative is y prime equals 2 cosine x. For y equals sine x over 2, this can be rewritten as 1 half times the sine of x. Therefore, the derivative is 1 half cosine x, or cosine x over 2. Lastly, for the function y equals x plus cosine x, our derivative is y prime equals 1 minus sine x. Now let's take a look at some problems involving velocity. When calculating average velocity, average velocity is found by calculating the change in position divided by the change in time. Example, if a billiard ball is dropped from the height of 100 feet, its height, s, at time t is given by s equals negative 16 t squared plus 100 where s is measured in feet and t is measured in seconds. Find the average velocity over the interval from 1 to 1.5. So in this problem, our change in position will be found by calculating the function's position at 1.5 seconds minus its position at 1 second. The change in time will be found by subtracting 1.5 minus 1. Therefore, our average velocity is calculated as negative 40 feet per second by applying this rule. The derivative is used to find instantaneous velocity. That is, the velocity of an object at a particular instant in time rather than over an interval of time. This is different from the average velocity. The derivative of the position function of an object provides the velocity function. Example, the position of a ball that has been dropped from the top of a building is given by the function s of t equals negative 16 t squared minus 22 t plus 220. What is the ball's velocity after 3 seconds? What is its velocity after falling 108 feet? To find the velocity after 3 seconds, we will take the derivative of s of t to find v of t. Using the power rule and the constant rule, the derivative of the velocity function equals negative 32t minus 22. This is the derivative of the position function, which provides us with our instantaneous velocity function. Therefore, to find the velocity after 3 seconds, we plug 3 in for time, and we find that the velocity after 3 seconds is negative 118 feet per second. To find the velocity after it has fallen 108 feet, we first need to figure out at what time it has fallen 108 feet. To do this, set the position function equal to 108 and solve for t. 
solving this function, this, this equation can be done with the quadratic formula or with a graph. And we find that the time values where the ball would have fallen 108 feet would be either negative 3.421 seconds, which really doesn't work. It doesn't make sense for the time to be negative in this situation, or 2.046. The negative value does not make sense in this problem since time cannot be negative. So we need to find the velocity at t equals 2.046. So we will calculate s prime of 2.046. And we find that this is equal to negative 87.472 feet per second. In summary, if you are asked to find the average velocity of an object over an interval, use the formula average velocity equals change in position over change in time. If you are asked to find the instantaneous velocity or the velocity of an object at a particular instant, use the derivative of the position function. Z of t equals s prime of t. Velocity equals